part three of chapter eight. We'll continue with this example, example number four. So a falling ball on vertical spring. So a 0.2 kilogram ball, which is right there, is attached to a vertical spring. Okay, so obviously it is subjected to the force of gravity. The spring constant is 28 newtons per meters. So I have K, 28 and over M. And I have the mass of the ball being 0.2 kilograms. That's what I have. I'm just gonna write down what I have. When released from rest, so initially the velocity is zero, so initial velocity is zero. How far does the ball fall before being brought to the momentarily stopped by the spring? It means when it gets all the way down here, the spring is cons uh, completely uh, you know, uh, um, is out of the shape compared to its un, you know, strained spring or on a strain or you know, its original shape. So in other words, the final velocity is also zero. So what you have here in this point is you have gravity or gravitational potential energy, gravitational potential energy. And then you have here is spring potential energy. So, so uh, in other words, uh, since we do not have any air resistance and we do not have any uh, non-conservative forces, the total mechanical energy in point I should be total mechanical energy in point F. So Ki plus Ui is Kf plus Uf, okay? Uh, we know that kinetic energy is zero for both cases. It starts from zero and end up being zero because of the spring is pulling it back. So what we have is uh, U initial should be equal to U final. U initial is only due to gravity. You are holding it. The spring is not playing any role. But you are holding it in the height of H zero. So you have MGH zero. U of final, the final potential is only due to spring, and you know what it is, half K X squared. I'm uh, using just the value of it, because if you remember, this negative here, uh, Let's see where it was. So this negative, if I can find it, uh, no, apparently I can't find it, but it was either here or to actually go very quickly to see where I can find it. Yeah, right there. So if you remember, the work done was, uh, uh, was negative kx squared, okay? And then this is your, um, this is your potential energy, right? So half kx squared is the value for it. But what I have here is X, which is the displacement or amount that this spring has moved is exactly H zero here. So in other words, I have M, I have X being exactly H zero. So I have M G H zero being equal to half K H zero squared. Okay, so zero squared. Now what I can do is to get rid of some stuff. For example, this H zero and this to the power of two can cancel out. Okay, leaving me with M 
g equals half k h zero, which means I can write h zero to be two m g over k. So that is the value that you have. But then now you can put all the numbers you have. We have M to be 0.2 kilograms, you have K to be 28. So you can substitute the numbers and find the value that you're looking for. So let's take a look at this. We have a block and it's released from rest. So all the way here it is, it has no velocity. So velocity here initially is zero. And uh, in a frictionless inclined as shown. So there is no friction to kill our energy or to turn our energy to zero or, you know, to, uh, to heat, in fact. When the moving block is in a content, con contact with the spring and compressing it, what is happening to the gravitational potential energy or U of gravity and elastic potential energy, U of elastic? So... Uh, once this object is falling down, it, it is getting closer to the ground. So you have uh, U equals MGH, right? So you have this H decreasing, the height is decreasing for gravitational potential energy, so U is decreasing. So uh, U is decreasing, and once this object or this mass or block is in contact, uh, uh, you know, contact with this spring, it is making this spring to compress. It's compressing the spring. So it's uh, storing gravitational elastic energy um, or potential elastic energy inside the spring because it's compressing it. So the U of a spring, which was half k x squared, because this x is increasing, then this u is increasing. So u of gravity is decreasing and u of elastic is increasing. So that's the answer. Energy diagram, and this is uh, also another very important part of chapter eight. So an energy diagram is the graph that shows both potential energy function u of x and a total mechanical energy E. Okay, so um, the so the figure on the right illustrate the energy diagram for a glider, right? So I have a glider oscillating back and forth, and so it's going all the way. It's connected to a spring, so it is going all the way to here. So it's going to this point, and it is oscillating back to this point. All right, so from negative A to positive A. All right, so uh, the, the glider is letting this, this uh, the spring is letting this glider to uh, slide back and forth. So the U is half K X squared, okay? That's where the U is. And it's always positive, it does not matter what X is because x is squared is, is positive regardless. So you have a u that is positive all the time. And then you have a kinetic energy, which is half mv squared. And you know, because there is no non-conservative uh, forces involved, there is no friction involved, in other words, you know that this value, e, which is U plus K should be constant. It should not change at all. In other words, you have a straight line like that. It does not change with X. If X changing, the E value is constant, okay? So for example, at this point, I have this much of U and this much of K, but they will end up adding the same value. At this point, I have this much of U and this much of K, okay? So this is U, this is K. 
it'll add up to be the same value. At this point, at the very end, there is a, the collider will stop eventually. So there is no kinetic energy. And everything has turned to be potential. On the other end is the same thing at this point. The collider will stop at the other end as well. So there is no kinetic energy and everything has turned to potential. Okay, but if you add things up, you'll, you will always have a constant value for the total mechanical energy because there is no friction involved to kill or reduce the energy for you. Equilibrium. When a force is zero, do you remember the equilibrium from uh, you know, our previous chapters? I think it was like chapter um, four or five-ish. Uh, when you're talking about if this object is not moving because the force was zero. When a force is zero, the particle in a energy diagram is said to be at equilibrium. Remember the force, that force is a derivative of the potential or the slope of the graph. So force is the negative derivative of u of x of dx. Okay, that's what the force is. Or it is the slope of the line at each point. Okay, so uh, if f is zero, then the slope is zero. And f is only zero, or slope is only zero at the maximum or minimum. Okay, so in other words, if I want to show this, if I have a point like this, the slope is zero only at this point. So the slope is only zero here, and the slope is only zero here. So that means the force is zero here, and the force is zero here because this derivative is zero. Okay, so these are called the equilibrium point. Now we have a stable equilibrium and we have an unstable equilibrium. Okay, so for unstable equilibrium is the maximum points or maxima. Stable equilibrium is the minimum or the minimum points. Okay, so in other words, if you're looking at this, if you consider that there is a little bit a ball or a little um, object, it can only stay here. It will be trapped in here. But versus if you let the ball to stay there, it might fall to the either side. So it's unstable equilibrium points. And these are all equilibrium points because they are either minima or maxima or the minimum points or the maximum points of this energy diagram, okay? So if you draw a line, you see that the slope is zero. If you draw a line here, for example, you see that the slope of this line is zero. So these are equilibrium points, but only two of them are stable equilibrium points and two of them are not as stable, right? So if you're looking at this, X1 is a stable, all right? X3 is a stable, X2 and X4 are unstable, all right? So uh, F is positive here through this region before this x1, and uh, dux of dx is negative, all right? And uh, over here, and it's because the curvature is down here, all right? So the curvature is down. The curvature is up. The dux over x is positive. The curvature is down, and the dux of x is negative. So dux, dx is negative. The curvature is up. 
okay? And uh, so du over dx is positive, but f is negative because we are below the um, this point, okay? So in other words, if you draw, in order to find a equilibrium point, in our case, for example, right, if you come here and you tangent a line to this point, okay, and to this point, you will see that you have a um, negative a slope for those. And if you do the same thing for here and here, which are unstable, you see that you have a positive slope. And this is a slope to fx to force times, to force displacement or the force position slope, by the way. So the pos these are unstable for the green and stables for the black ones. So let's take a look at this. Potential energy versus position, just uh, an example. The graph shows the potential energy U for a particle that moves along the x-axis. At which of the labeled x-coordinates, so either A, B, C, or D, uh, is there zero force on the particle? A zero force on the particle. What was the force again? So force was negative DU uh, over DX. And when we want to make this force to be zero, that means the slope of the line should be zero. Where the slope of the line is zero, is that here? At this point, the slope of the line is zero. And maybe here, but if I do it for part D, if I do it for D, then I think it will be a little bit tilted. So uh, the only answer would be answer B, at B only. Because this uh, slope is zero. So in other words, if I want to write a little bit better, I would say F is negative DUX of X. Or in other words, if you have the u function, just take a derivative of it and you will find uh, what the f is. Or the slope of the line or tangent line, slope of the tangent line. To u x figure okay let's go over some examples here uh, so example number five we have a motorcyclist that is trying to leap across the canyon by driving horizontally off of a cliff at 38 meters per second so here initial velocity is 38 meters per second Ignoring air resistance, that's a very good sign because we're not dealing with the non conservative forces anymore. This is a very good sign. Find a speed with which the cycle strike the ground on the other hand, uh, on the other side. So in, in other words, we're looking for V final here. And we have the height of each point as well. So since there is no, since um, there is no friction, there is no friction or any force that is non-conservative is zero, then I can write that initial and final energy should be equal. So initial energy should be equal to final energy or Q 
ki plus ui should be equal to kf plus uf. Okay, so ki is half mvi squared plus ui is mghi. Kf final is half m v final squared and v final squared is or the v final is what we are looking for plus m g h final so before we substitute any numbers i want to get rid of some stuff for example i can get rid of m like if i factor out m from left and factor out m from right hand side i can cancel them out okay then what i have here is half of v i squared so I have half of 38 squared plus G is 9.81. Initial height is 70 meters. So I have seven zero here equals half of V final squared plus G is 9.81 times height of final, which is 35 meters. So that's that. And then based on this, you can easily find the final velocity just substitute the uh you know just solve it for final velocity here and then it should be easy to find so fireworks another example here and this time it's a very interesting example and kind of important so i'm going to start here assuming that the non-conservative force generated by a burning a proplet does 425 joule of work so in other words we have a non-conservative force done, uh, work done by non-conservative force given to us. Okay, so work done by non-conservative force, which is a rocket here, being 425 joule. What is the final speed of 0.35 kilogram rocket? Ignore air resistance. Okay, so we're looking for final velocity here. So initially, the initial velocity is zero at the beginning, and the initial height is h zero. Final height is 29 meters, but we want to look for final velocity. So we're looking for v of final. That's what we're looking for. So how do we take into account this work done by a non-conservative force? Remember this that we had work total work being equal to delta k but then i said this total work is work done by other forces plus work done by uh, gravity work done by you know gravitational potential energy or gravity or plus work done by elastic forces um, being equal to delta k and we know that these two are negative delta u, okay? So we can write work by the others, other forces is delta k plus delta u. So here the other force is exactly being given to us, okay, which is coming from this um, rocket. So 425 would be delta K, which is K2 minus K1, K1, plus delta U is U2 minus U1. So K2 is half M V2 squared minus half M V1 squared plus m g h2 minus m g h1 so i have 425 here let's not forget 425 here and then what you have you want to um, um let's see you want to um factor out some stuff first so i can factor out half m from this part so I'd have half of m, then I have v of two squared minus v of one squared, plus I can factor out mg, mg h two minus h one. 
So 425 is half m. V final is missing. We don't really know what it is. Uh, do we have any information about the um, the rocket mass? Yes, it's 0.35. So rocket mass is 0.35. So I have half 0.35 kilogram V of final squared minus V of initial, which is given. V initial is zero. Okay, so this guy is completely zero. That means it is actually very good for us. So I can just write it like that. In other words, here I have initially starting from zero. So this guy is zero. Plus M, which is 0 0.35 or 34 or whatever it was, 0 0.35. I am not making a mistake. So 9.81 and then H2 minus H1. H2 minus H1. And another was change of the height here, which is 29 meters or given to us. So I know this is 29. Now, the only thing unknown here is this V final. So you can easily find what the V final is. Solve this equation for, to find the V final for us. So skateboarder in a drawing starts um, down the left side of the ramp with an initial speed of 5.4 meters per second. So here, or initially V initial or V zero, is 5.4 meters per second, okay? If non conservative forces such as kinetic friction and air resistance are negligible, this is to our benefit, this, this makes everything much easier, what would be the height h of the highest point reached by the skateboard above the right side of the ramp? So in other words, find this, how much it's going up, All right? So with respect to the height of the uh, other side of the ramp. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so once he gets to this point, the final velocity is zero because he'll, he'll stop at some point. So since there is no um, non-conservative forces, okay, that means that initial total energy and final total energy should be equal because there is no force to transform those energies to shape of um, heat. There is no friction, so everything should be conserved. In other words, K of initial plus U of initial should be equal to K of final plus U of final, okay? So, K of final is zero because the skater will eventually stop at some point in the sky or you know in the, in the height h here. It will stop. So finally, it will stop in, uh, in a vertical direction. There's no velocity anymore, and that's the point. It, it will be a momentarily stop. By the way, it's not gonna. He's not gonna stay there for two minutes. It will be a, for a very short period of time, and then he'll fall back down again. But at that point, the velocity is zero, so the kinetic energy is zero. At this point, since we are choosing this point to this line to be our reference line, at this point or initial point here, initial point, the um, potential is zero. Even though this is not from in the ground, but we choose this line or this, this line that you have here to be our reference, okay? So I can compare everything to this line of reference and the physics should still be the same. The physics should not change. So if I choose this line of reference to be my zero gravitational potential energy line, then the U initial should be zero. Even though it is not on the ground, it, is, it has some height, but I can choose this line to be the line of reference and I can compare everything else with this line. So that means that initially the potential energy is zero. So now what I have is this, 
ki initial kinetic energy should be equal to u final. So I have half m v initial squared equals m g height m g h. So m and m will cancel out. Okay, you have half v initial is given to us 5.4 meters per second. 5.4 squared, g is 9.81, and multiplied by h. Now h is 5.4 squared over 2 times 9.81. Whatever it is, put in your calculator, that will be height h. The most important um, you know, point or note from this problem is that you can choose a line as a reference line for your zero level gravitational potential energy. In this case, since we did not know the height of this U-shape um, path, since we did not know this height, we choose this line to be our frame of reference. We choose this line to be our zero gravitational potential energy reference, okay? We did not know what this is. So that's why we choose this line. And the problem is also asking for this h, okay? And the problem is also asking to find the height with respect to the top, okay? Above the right side of the ramp. So he doesn't even care. The problem does not even care about the actual ramp size or the ramp height. It's actually also asking us to find this h. So it's, in other words, it's telling us uh, to choose this line to be the reference line. Anyway, let's see what we have here. Skateboarder launch. So the drawing show a skateboarder moving at 5.4 meters per second along the horizontal section of the track that is slanted upward for 48 degrees above the horizontal end. So in other words, this is, this theta is 40 something degrees. This is 48 degrees. Okay, we got it. Above the horizontal end, which is 0.4 meters above the ground. So we, we also know the height of it, which is 0.4 meters above. When she leaves the track, she follows a characteristic path of a projectile motion. Ignore friction and air resistance. This is a very good sign. That means the initial and final velocity, uh, uh, energy should be the same. Find the maximum height, h, height of that point, a she rises above the end of the track. Okay. So I have two points. I choose two points. This is my first point, point one. This is my second point, point two. Since there is no uh, friction or air resistance, I can easily say that my initial, uh, initial uh, put, uh, total energy or mechanical energy should be equal to my final mechanical energy. Okay, so Ki plus Ui should be equal to Kf plus Uf. Okay, so Ki is half mvi squared, ui is mghi, k of final, okay, so um, half mv final squared plus mgh final, okay. So this is what we have, and then we'll be able to solve this problem very easily. Now, when you're looking at this, let's see what we have here. We have the initial speed of 5.4 meters per second right there, okay? So this would be our speed. All right, let me actually making it look a little bit better. There we go, okay. So, and then we have a height of 0.4 meters for that point. 
And uh, we have to find the velocity of this point. And the velocity of this point is only velocity. The velocity of the point two is, not, is, is only along the x direction. This is the projectile motion. So in the projectile motion, if you remember, in a projectile motion, you had something like this. Okay, at this point, so you had V, and then that V had a V of X. So this you had V zero, V zero of X, and V is zero of Y, okay. And let me actually write it maybe a little bit more consistent by color. So if I write it V zero, Okay, and the V zero of X was V zero cosine theta, V zero of Y was V zero sine theta, and that was our theta. But we remember that it is constant. Okay, through the path because it, it does a constant velocity motion type along the x direction and it will do a free fall along the y direction. So this point would have the same v0, sorry, this has to be over here. What I just said should be right here. For x direction, not for y direction. This is a free fall. Free fall. The speed changes. But this one is a constant value through the path. Okay for entire motion for each point. So I would have, I would have V zero cosine of theta for this point along the X direction. For the maximum point, I'll have V zero cosine of theta for this point along the X direction. I'll have V zero cosine of theta the same over here. So along the x direction is a constant speed. So along the x direction, the motion is constant speed. We know that from projectile motion, right? So in other words, at point H, at max height, at max H, what we have is that we have V zero of X being V zero cosine theta, but, and the V zero of Y is zero because along the Y direction, it's not moving up anymore. So it's the, it's the property of that. Okay, it's like a free fall. So in other words, if I want to write down this final part, I have to use the proper, and, um, configuration for this v final. So let's let's write that at exactly what we remember. So we have half m v initial squared plus m g h initial being equal to half m v final squared plus m g h final. Okay. Now half mv initial squared plus mgh initial is half m v final is v initial times cosine of theta squared just like that initial times cosine of theta v final at that point at this point which is the final point for me point two I have, which is the maximum point, I have V zero cosine, so I, have, I use it here, plus MG 
h of final. Let's take a look at h of final. Let's take a look. h of final with that point is this h plus 0.4. So I have h plus 0.4. Okay, so in other words, let's see what we have. We have half mvi squared plus mg uh, hi being equal to half m vi squared cosine squared theta plus mgh plus mg um, this 0.4 was initial, so I can just write as, as it was. This 0.4 was initial height. So I can write it as this, okay? So now if you're looking at this, I can cancel out this with this, all right? The reason I changed this 0.4 because I wanted to be able to have the same type of notation here, okay? Now, what else do I have? I can, at this point, I can just put numbers in. But let's see, I have, uh, I will bring this guy to the left-hand side. So I'll have half mvi squared minus half mvi squared cosine squared theta, okay, being equal to mgh. Factoring out half mvi squared, you'll end up with one minus cosine squared theta equal mgh. This guy is just sine squared, right? Because sine squared of an angle plus cosine of the squared of the same angle should be one. So you can write it like that. So you can write half mvi squared sine squared theta being mgh, and then h is, and then you can also cancel out m's by the way, okay? Then h is half vi squared sine squared theta. Do you remember what this vi squared sine squared is? Or do you remember what vi sine is? Vi sine, it's right here, okay? V zero or v initial times sine, it is right there. So I can write it like this as well, half vi or v zero, along the y direction squared. And this would be our height. V zero y squared over two g. Oh, it's the same formula that we have here in previous chapters. You remember when we were talking about the projectile motion, the second type of projectile motion above the ground with an initial angle of theta. As I said, if you want to find the maximum point, Height is v squared over 2g. It's the same thing. Okay. So let's talk about this last problem. Bead on the wire example. So a two gram bead slides along the frictionless wire as shown in the figure. At point A, at point A, the bead is moving to the right, but with a negligible speed. So in other words, V at point A is zero. Okay, that's what it means. And so what is the potential energy of the B at point A? That is super easy. We know what the M is, two gram. Okay, let me actually write that down here. So the M, is two gram or 
two times 10 to the negative three kilograms, okay? Because kilogram is the SI uh, unit for mass. So I have to have it on SI units, which is kilogram for mass. So if I want to find the potential energy at point A, I have U being MGH, M is two times 10 to the negative three, G is 9.81, and H is 100 centimeters. So 100 centimeters is um, 100 times 10 to the negative two. Um, or it's in fact one, if I wanted to write it like that. One, one meters is 100 centimeters so it has to be in meters it can't be in centimeters so that's why i'm just keeping one here uh, or you can write 100 times 10 to the negative 2 which will end up being one anyway so uh, and this would be the value whatever it is you put it in the calculator it should be easy to to calculate all right so Let's go to part two. What is the kinetic energy of the bead at point B? At point B, all of this potential energy here has turned to the form of um, kinetic. So that was A or B. I have, since there's no friction involved in this problem, EF initial should be equal to EF final. So K of initial plus K of final should be equal to, sorry, <clears throat> K of initial plus U of initial should be equal to K of final plus U of final. So initially it says with a negligible of speed, so this guy, the kinetic is zero. When it gets to the point B at the ground, right there at the ground, there is no height potential energy level of zero, there's no height. So in other words, the U final is zero. And uh, U initial is MGH initial. K final is half M V final squared. You can cancel out M and M from both sides. So you have G, which is 9.81. H of final is one meter above the ground, it's 100 centimeters and point A, half V squared, V final squared. So you can write V final squared of that point or point B to be two times 9.81 times one, so V final to 9.81 times one. That's meters per second. So that's your final velocity at point two. At point two. So that's part B. Let's go over part C. What is the speed of the beat at point B? which we just found. What we were looking for in part B was what is the kinetic energy of the beat at point B, not the speed, but we find it regardless. So I will just say B and C, B and C. So if I want to find the kinetic energy of that point, okay, U of I, which is MGH. So M is given to us uh, two grams or two times 10 to the negative three kilogram. So two times 10 to the negative three. G is 9.81. H is 100 meters, 100 centimeters or one meter. So you'll end up with two times 9.81 times 10 to the negative three. The potential, why did I find the potential energy of the point one and make it equal to kinetic energy of point two? So this is point. A and this is point B because they are equal. We have a conservation of energy. So whatever 
potential energy I have here, point A, should be equal to whatever, poten whatever energy that I have on point B, which is only in forms of kinetic. What is the speed of the beat at point C? At point C, I am right there. So part D of the question is asking, V at point C, what is that? So I know that still I have um, EI equals EF, but which one is I, which one is F? Final is point C, I know that. So I know that this is point C. What is point I? Which one is I initial? Is this this or is that, is this A or is that B? Could be either of them, does not matter. Energy is conserved. So either point would work. Point A or B, does not matter. So let's say I want to use point A, for example. So E of A should be equal to E of B or E of C here. Okay, so EFA should be equal to EFC. Energy at point A should be equal to energy at point C, okay? So energy at point A is kin uh, kinetic plus potential. Energy at point C is kinetic plus potential. You can use I and F, initial and final, does not matter as long as you keep the track of what, which one is which, that's fine. You can use A and C, it's up to you what notation you want to use. Either way, it's totally okay. So at point A, there is no um, velocity, so kinetic energy is zero. You have U of A, which is M, G, H of A. Kinetic energy at point C is half M, V of C squared plus U of Point C is M, G, H of C. Okay. Now, you can factor out M from the right-hand side and cancel it with the M from the left. So in other words, you can cancel out M's. You have G of H, A, being equal to half M V of C squared plus G H of C. So if you bring this to the other side, you will have G H of A minus H of C being equal to half. By the way, this M is not here. I canceled that out. So it's very important if you, when you are solving problems in exam to go over everything one more time to make sure that you're not making silly mistakes like that that I just did. So V of C squared. And then what I have is V of C being equal to 2G H of A minus H of C. So being equal to two times 9.81 times H of A minus H of C. 100 centimeters here minus 80 centimeters will, be, will give you 20 centimeters or 0.2 meters. Okay, and then put that in the calculator to see what the final value should be. And that should be VFC in meters per second. Okay, this is the end of uh, part three of chapter eight and end of all the videos of chapter eight plus some examples that I sold. So um, if you have any questions, let me know.